Welcome to the program. I'm here with Jeannie Fritz. She's been a resident of Urbana for 21 years, and she's been serving as the deputy clerk for two years. Welcome. Well, thank you, Anthony. Um, first, I, I wanted to, I have a couple of things I wanted to ask you. So. Um, first, uh, what's your work experience with the uh, court system? Well, I started working with the county 12 years ago, and the first five years I worked for the Champaign County Child Support Agency, um, where I worked as the assistant to the staff attorney. And then I heard that Judge Wilson was looking for someone to be Magistrate Meyer's assistant. So I met with him, convinced him I was the person for the job, and I worked on Judge Wilson's staff for five years. And after I was there for five years, the current clerk asked me if I'd be interested in working in his legal department, and I have now been there for two years. Great. That's, that's great. Now, um, you're, you're currently running for clerk to become of clerk of courts. Yes. <laughs> Let me get that straight. Okay. <clears throat> and what made you decide to run for the clerk of court? Um, I saw a need in the office for organization. I'm a very organized person, and uh, little things bother me, little details. And um, I thought that the current clerk was not going to be running, so I decided to step up, and I thought, this is something I can do, and do it well. Okay. Um, let's see what else we got on here. Um, what are the responsibilities of the clerk of court? I, I absolutely no idea what Most did. people don't. Uh, we record all the decisions that are made by the judges and magistrates. We're the keeper of the records. Everything that's public record, uh, Anybody can come in and look at anybody's uh, divorce records, civil records, foreclosure cases, criminal records. We have a lot of people that come in. You might want to, you know, somebody new moves in your neighborhood. You might want to see, check, out a check up anything. Employee. Yes, any kind of uh, public records, we keep those. And we also, I mean, we have very old records. A lot of people, when they're getting ready to retire, they need certified copies of certain documents. To put in for their retirement, so they come into our office and we research, and mm -hmm. they get their information from us. I, I had no idea. Uh, I guess it's don't pretty. Know. So you probably have a lot of files that you have to a maintain. Lot. Yes, a lot. And somebody who is detail oriented would be good at that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, so tell me about the changes that are uh, coming to the uh, the court next year. There's big changes coming next year. Of course, uh, we will have two new judges. Right. Um, the, we now have the, used to be the old bank building across the street from the courthouse, so that's going to become another courthouse. So we'll have three, three judges to work for, and uh, right now I couldn't say specifically what the changes are going to be because it's all really up in the air until election and they figure out who the new judges are going to be, but it's going to be a lot of changes and I think it's going to be at least a year before the whole system is worked out. And do we know who those people are who are running for those um, two positions? For, it's Lori Reisinger and Kevin Talibi for, I believe it's probate judge. Okay. I'm not sure who's running for which one. And the other one is Kathy Weithman, Ron Tompkins, and Brett Gilbert. Okay. So two of those five people will be our new judges. Wow, that's that's a pretty hefty field. Yes. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't wish. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't want to run in that. That's a tough choice. That's a tough. That's going to be a tough choice. Um, so, what improvements will you make to the office? The major improvement I see is cross training, mm -hmm. because there are four of us in the office now. We all do most of the work. We all do a little bit of everything. But um, my major duty is I do the domestic cases. One of the other girls does all the civil cases, which we have a lot of with all the foreclosures going on. And then one girl is best with the criminal cases. Mm -hmm. And when you have someone that specializes in something, when that person's not there, that hurts. That's that's I'm a blow sure. to I, the I where workflow. Get bogged down. So yeah, so the, my major concern right now would be cross training and um, storage. Storage is a big problem because of all the records we have, and uh, basically we keep them forever. So right. storage is a big issue. Are, are they thinking about, uh, is this like paper storage? Are these paper documents yes. or are they converting them to electronics? Or um, Not right now. A lot of courts are going that way just because of the storage problem, mm -hmm. but we are still paper. And we, I don't know if you've ever been to the courthouse, the basement, but 
no, I haven't. It's kind of a scary place. I think it's a, well, <laughs> I mean, there's I documents down there from, you know, the 1800s. It's, oh, really? It's very, very limited storage space. Now, see, I would I would dig on going on down there. Yeah, well, I'll just take you down there someday, down there. and you can just and, look and around. Because all those old stuff, are, you know, fascinating. It is interesting. It is interesting stuff. But it's a major problem when it comes to storing it for 100 or more years. Right. I bet it does. I bet it does. And, and probably just maintaining the, um, the physicality yes. of the actual mm -hmm. paperwork. So, I mean, what would happen if the, there was a flood or a fire? Well, there was a fire. Uh, I don't know how many years ago it was, and they lost a lot of records, probably pre-1800s, and they're just gone. There's, you know, there's no replacing them. So mm -hmm. I think maybe electronic or some other kind of method would be an improvement. Well, and that's going to take somebody who's um, very detail oriented. Yes. I'm, I come from a computer uh, background, an IT background, and I can tell you that it, you need somebody who's very detail oriented yes. in order to put those kind of things into place. A little obsessive compulsive? Maybe a, just a little. <laughs> just a little. Uh, uh, what was the public response to? What's the public response been to? Uh, you're running. It's been great. The The funniest response is probably from people that really know me because they just can't <laughs> believe I'm doing this because I'm very private. I, I'm not, well that's because a lot of people, they really don't know me because I've just not been out in the public eye and I, that's the funniest, just the people that really know me just keep saying, I can't believe you're doing this. I can't believe you're doing all these things you're doing, but just the general public, the response has been overwhelming. Just people just walking up to me on the street saying, you know, this is great, someone like you is running, definitely have my vote, and it's just, it's uplifting, it keeps you going. It I really does. Imagine it does. Because, you know, it's a lot of stress and it's a long campaign, and just to have to know there are people like that behind you, it really keeps you going. Mm -hmm. And you're running as a... Democrat. Democrat. I'm the Democratic candidate. And who's the, uh, your opponent? Penny Underwood. Penny Underwood. And she works in the BMV title division at the clerk's office. Well, I, I don't know her, but I'd like to have her on the program at some point in time. I'm sure she can. And, and introduce myself to her. That would be great. Um, I want to go back to something that you were, because um, this is, you just said that it wasn't something that you, this is not something that you would do. No. <laughs> People who are surprised to find out that this is something, oh my gosh, she's running. I am not a public uh, so person. So, <laughs> what, and, but it didn't seem, I, I want to know why, what was it that, you know, what was the trigger that made you want to run? Was there something that happened? Has there been something that's, you know, did you specifically find something that you go, you know, this really needs, I really need to do this because this needs to be done? I think it all started with the current clerk jokingly said to me one day, why don't you run? because I think he wasn't sure if he wanted to and what was going to happen to the office. And I, well, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not sure I want to do that. But then the more I worked there, the more I saw it really needs someone that understands the system, that is very organized, and I just, and then of course I met uh, Bob Hamilton, who is, uh, pretty much runs uh, the Democratic him. Party. Yes. Yeah. And he asked me, he approached me and asked me if I'd be interested in running for the Democratic Party. And I put him off for about four months because I really had to think about how much in the public I do. He is very be. persuasive. He's very persuasive. But this is not just the persuasion, he convinced me yeah. that we can do this, we can win this. You know, I have the experience and, and he has the support and with all that together, I, he just convinced me we could do it. Great. Uh, you know, and and he's been around for so long, and yes. he's such a sweet man, and his wife is terrific. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't have anything but nice things to say about Bob, um, and he and I know him. He is very, very convincing. Yes, <laughs> he can make you do things that you just don't, you know. I wish he wouldn't ask me that. And you end up, you know, he needs help on a project. Uh, you know, you end up going down there and rolling. And you're doing it before you know you're doing it. Yes, you're doing it before you know. So I, I've known it for a few years now, and I, I, I can't say anything. Yeah, but I really thought about it. It wasn't a, a rash decision.